we had last year Ariel Garten, who, was, uh, who did the brain-controlled uh, computing demonstration. And uh, I was um, absolutely uh, impressed by, by what she did. And I think uh, you guys liked it as well. So we wanted Ariel to be back. And Marco seems to be pretty equipped as well. Uh, is it is something you're going to do with my wife? I'm, I'm not sure. OK, well, um, I can't wait to see this, and I can't wait to have uh, with us on stage Ariel Garten, the CEO of Interaxon, coming all the way from Canada for us. Ariel? I'm Ariel, the CEO of Interaxon, as you heard. We design and create thought-controlled computing's applications, products, and experiences. So, I was here at the web last year telling you about thought-controlled computing and how it's going to change the way we interact with technology. I'm here today, with the help of my lovely assistants, to show you how thought-controlled computing is going to change the way we interact with ourselves. Before we get there, though, you probably need to know a little bit more background, like what is thought-controlled computing? Well, it's exactly what it's said. My slides, please. Eh, who needs them? It's exactly what it sounds like. It's the ability to engage with parts of the world using only the mind. Now, all this might sound like science fiction, but hey, even the future has an expiry date. Thought control technology is real, and it's here. As evidenced, here's a toy that uses EEG technology. It's called the Mattel MindFlex. It uses an increase in your beta brain waves to levitate the ball and send it through the loop. Or these are these adorable thought-controlled ears from a Japanese company, Neuroware. They change the position of your ears depending on your brain state, allowing you to communicate through new and untapped social signals. Now, what made consumer interactions like these possible was the availability of low-cost consumer headsets in 2009 from people like Neurosky, Emotive, and BCINet. They took what used to cost us like $10,000 per interaction and turned them into consumer accessible solutions. So these are our partners. They create the hardware. And our technology creates the software, algorithms, and compelling user experiences. And together, we build the brainwave-enabled tools that are going to fit into people's lives. How does it work? It works by reading the electrical signals on our heads. Our brains are fundamentally electrical organs. Neurons firing back and forth in grand orchestration. When these impulses sum together, they can be read from outside of the head in the form of a brain wave. When you think or engage in anything mental, your brain waves change. Some of these changes are stable from person to person and can be used as a control signal. We can't yet detect words or specific commands from your head, but that's a few years down the road. But what we can do now are some basic interactions that are still pretty darn nifty. And over time, as signal processing improves and we're able to identify newer, more effective, more subtle brainwave interactions and signals, we can see more sophisticated kinds of interactions coming onto the market. At Interaxon, we've been innovating with technology for almost a decade, creating things like musical interactions, physical objects like levitating chairs. So as your alpha waves rise, so does the chair home automation systems, and probably our most fun application, the world's largest thought-controlled computing installation at the Vancouver 2010 Winter Olympics. There, participants at Ontario House got the chance to control the lighting on the CN Tower, the Canadian Parliament buildings, and Niagara Falls, all the way across the country, using only, you guessed it, the mind. Now, as fun as it is to control stuff with your mind, once you have a system with a human and a computer in the loop, the computer can start to know something about you. And you can both participate in the experience together. You can actually be inside the experience, and it can respond to you. So, Geraldine is going to demo an application today of responsive technology where the environment's actually responding to her state. She's looking at it on a little monitor here. You can watch it on the big monitor there. But first, Geraldine, would you like to see your brain waves? Oh, brain waves. So that's what's going on inside Geraldine's head right now. C'est vrai. 
the wavy line on the top, the white line, is actually a raw feed coming out of her brain waves. The other two lines are decomposition of the signal over time. So we can look at the different bands that are activating at any moment. Can you blink for me? You can see the signal moving. So it's actually Geraldine. So now we can take an application like this, her brain waves, and put them into a game or an experience. So this environment is responding to Geraldine's brain state. The line on the top, the yellow line, is her focus state. As she increases her focus, just like she's doing now, we start to change the environment, and you get more smoke coming out of the buildings. When you focus over 75%, it snows. Thank you for making it snow. The line on the bottom is her relaxation state. It's, she's going to increase your relaxation state, and you'll see it reflected in the birds over there. Thank you, Geraldine. As you increase your meditation, the birds slow down. And it's kind of like you're stopping time as you meditate. The boat rocks. You can rock the boat for me. Thank you. <laughs> yes, you just did that. And the clouds jump up and down. If you blink, we can make the clouds jump. Whee! Thank you. So this is an example of how you can actually put yourself into technology to make it a truly immersive experience. How was that? That's fantastic. <laughs> awesome. So once technology knows something about you, you can do something possibly even more interesting. You can come to know something about you. I have Marco here demonstrating another application of the technology where you can play games and interact and at the end know where you're at, get an insight into your own personal state. Now, we all know that Marco's a magician, and so I just have to clarify the fact that there's absolutely no magic going on here. Marco's brainwaves are being connected to the iPad wirelessly. They're then interpreting his brainwave signal and using it to move forward the interaction. Could I get a camera on Marco? And over the shoulder? So maybe what you're going to have to do to show everybody. Oh, you've, done, you've actually done a very good job. Great. So we'll just hit start the application from scratch. So this is a game that we made uh, in partnership with Secret Exit. They're the makers of the stunning Zenbound 2. And it shows you what can happen when you bring brain waves to the iPhone or the iPad. So we're going to start the application there. Now, which one do you want to play? The big bird? The bird. All right, the bird. So <laughs> in this application, you wrap a rope around a wooden form. This line here is his focus state, and it moves the application forward. This line here is his meditation state, and it moves it sideways. You've actually half played this level, so let's give you a new level that you haven't played yet. Very good focus. Here, how about the ducky? Or... So you can see his focus power, and as he focuses on the object, it rotates. The more he focuses, the faster it rotates. Awesome work. Cool, cool, cool. So now you want to get it to connect to that line right there so that I can show everybody your brain stats at the end of the game. Here. Yeah, no pressure. He's just, you know, controlling stuff with his mind on stage, and there's no pressure at all. It's particularly uh, great when I tell him to meditate and change this axis, and everyone's staring at him. <laughs> You're doing really well. All right, we're going to cheat for a second. 
OK, I'm going to let you finish the game. So get it to where the brain stats are, and then call me, and we can come back and show everyone. You can restart it if you want and try to ease your level. Yep. Thank you. So can I have the PowerPoint, please? We call this entertainment. Entertainment is the sort of classes of affordances that we are given when we're able to interact not with just, just with technology, but also with ourselves. We have an application that's going to be coming out in the market next year that is an entertainment application so that you can play with technology and play with what's going on inside. Have fun. <laughs> so this can help us do things like chart unwanted symptoms and realize their alleviation. So that you can see the underlying patterns that begin to pull us away from what we want to focus on or cause stress or chronic fatigue. So you notice that he's playing a focus game. You can see graphs and stats and feedback that show you when your focus is high or when your focus is low, when you can start to do things that help you understand how to be in an optimal state or how to not be chronically exhausted so that we can avoid experiences like this up here. And we can try to figure out a more effective balance between work and play. Do you know what causes fatigue or brings out our energetic selves? What triggers might cause depressive or dejected moods? Or what we might need to realize in order to steer us away from the things that bring us down and towards the things that enlighten us. With thought control technologies, we be can begin to see the underlying narratives that propel us forward and tell us about our habits and our health. The Zio Sleep Trainer is a great example that's on the market today. It tracks your brainwaves during sleep and shows them to you so you can begin to understand what goes on when your consciousness goes off and make educated choices to improve your sleep. We can also help children with attention deficit disorder try to understand what's going on in their heads and why they have trouble focusing. In ADHD, children generate a low proportion of beta waves, or focus state, and a high proportion of theta waves. With brainwave and table technologies, you can show kids what's going on inside their own minds, empowering them to optimize their own learning tools and abilities. And you can do things like build these tools into a game. So kids can play a video game and in doing so, reinforce their beta waves and focus state to ameliorate their ADC symptoms as effectively as Ritalin. And for those looking to connect in and zen out, you can identify and track meditative states while deepening them. So with a guru in your pocket, you can bring clarity, awareness, or bliss. This is a project that's really dear to our hearts. For some, the new insights that brainwave technologies open in our lives are life improving. For others, they're life altering or life saving. Like this man above, who might be on his way to leading a less disruptive life in spite of his epileptic condition. We and partner labs are working to create unobtrusive epilepsy home monitoring systems. Here's a guideline for what we're going to see with this technology over the next two decades. The first applications that are more than just object controller games are actually going to be used to help you understand yourself, monitoring your brain state, and using that information to know or improve yourself. Once there's a critical mass of headsets in the market, applications that let you share and communicate information about yourself with others will begin to appear. In 20 years, this technology will be en route to being as ubiquitous as voice control technology is now. It's going to be a regular part of our daily lives. And you're going to see computers and devices that will learn to understand and respond to you and support you so that your technology can help you by managing distractions or adjusting your display based on your current cognitive load. So if you're an information overload, your computer can make the interface bigger, give you less info. Or you could walk into your home and it, knowing that you're cranky, could adjust the environment to help improve your mood. We all know that technology has decreased in size and increased in efficiency so that it can fit into our daily lives and in our back pockets. So too is brainwave technology going to get smaller, maybe to the size of a Bluetooth monitor or an electrical film. This was demonstrated at a university lab this year. 
This helps technology fit into our lives so that it virtually disappears. This is really an integral component of what we call humanizing technology. Technology should really integrate with the multitude of activities and deliciously unpredictable experiences in our lives without being detracting, distracting, or intrusive. Technology's really got to support our mental, physical, and spiritual pursuits without cluttering up our daily existence. In short, it's got to put humans first. And this is nice, because when we usually think of technology, we think about something kludgy, or we think about the technology, or we think about worlds that are outwardly focused. Thought control technology takes you on an inward journey. You discover parts of yourself that you never knew existed, and you're able to know what they feel like. It helps you understand a world inside, a new part of ourself with new capabilities, a new set of skills. It widens our experiential aperture with nuances and textures and data with which to create or just appreciate the narrative of our lives. Thought control computing and brainwave-enabled interactions will change the way we interact with technology and ourselves. And we invite you to join us. Literally, we're hiring from all walks and all professions. So contact us to get the conversation started and get the neurons firing, because I look forward to seeing you in the future. Thank you. And thank you. Vous êtes désolé. Alors. I ran out of rope. You ran out of rope. <laughs> this is a magician who ran out of rope. All right. I'm just going to use my finger to. Uh... You really did run out of rope. Oh, come on. I have a hard time with the send power. Oh, now it is. There we go. Okay, so I finished the game for him. So now we can look at your brain state. So these are your max zen power, your brain power, the amount of time you took play the game, graphs and stats that are going to show you if you were doing this right, what your brain looked like. And that's the beautiful work of art you made. Thank you. Thank you. And thank you, Geraldine. Merci. All right. All right. We're really glad to have you again. Yeah, just pull it off. Thank you. Hello. Thank you. Thank you, Ariel. Thank you. Are you happy about uh, that I, connection? It's amazing. Yeah. It's amazing. Yeah. yeah. All right. Marco, <laughs> are you connected? I felt it. I think I felt Geraldine. You felt <laughs> it? <laughs> All right. Well, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Ariel, for coming back this year.